My previous video explained what is the dollar value of a zero one, also known as a price value of basis point. And because I'm following the sequence in Bruce Tuckman chapter four, this video goes to the next step and looks at how we would apply this. And the situation is a market maker who has written call options at the client's request and then wants to hedge that exposure with futures contracts. And she's going to use the price value of basis point to size the position of the hedge, in this case, to determine how much futures contracts should I purchase to neutralize my interest rate exposure, at least from this single risk factor perspective. So we'll show you how we do that, the formula that Tuckman uses, what it means, and along the way, I'm going to mention a key point that we know is a stumbling block for new learners, and that's the following, that if we see uh, DV01 like this, that would be pretty plausible because it usually be a few cents. You can see here 0 0.035 dollars or three and a half cents. The point that I want to emphasize is that by convention, this is per $100 in face amount of the exposure or the instrument. Per 100 face amount, that means if we, act, if we want to get at the exact magnitude of the change implied, by our exposure or hedge, we need to remember to divide by 100 when we're using these values. So I continue to show you Bruce Tuckman's applications. That means I've replicated here his table 4.1, which summarized the situation. And the situation is that we have a market maker. We can imagine ourselves as the market maker who presumably at the client's request has written or sold call options. These call options have a name, but I'm just going to re refer to them as the call options. That's the underlying exposure. The market maker has written these options and then has price risk and then wants to hedge that price risk. In this case with futures contracts, they have a name, but I'm just going to refer to them as the futures contract. So, the exposure is a short option position and it's going to be hedged with a purchase or long position in futures contract. But the idea of the exercise is to answer the question, what's the size of this long position in futures contract that will hedge with respect to the DV01? We use this formula here mathematically, pretty straightforward. It's telling us we're solving for the face amount of the hedge instrument, the face amount of the futures contract in this case. And again, I would stress we are talking about face amounts, not current market values. Because the DV01s are expressed as in terms of per $100 of face amount. So we're solving for the face amount of the hedge instrument, and it's going to be equal to the face amount of the exposure, F superscript A, that's the face amount of the option exposure. I'm not showing that here yet. It's going to be 100 million. You can see we're multiplying by a ratio of their DV01s. So we're solving this way to enforce. Now I do a trivial mathematical re rearrangement just to solve, to show that we're solving to enforce this equality, which um, has an elegant symmetry to it, right? Face amount of the hedge instrument multiplied by its own DV01 needs to be equal to the face amount of the underlying exposure multiplied by its DV01, right? And the DV01s are right here. So this is the DV01 of the futures contract that will hedge. This is the DV01 of the option exposure. We've solved for that. You can see given the yellow inputs which are provided to us. But before I show you that, right, here's the equality. And we're solving for this to enforce this equality. Why? Because we want to, the underlying assumption here with the DV01 is a single factor risk model is a parallel shift in the yield curve. Right, so that DV01 here, for in the case of the options, you can see is about three and a half cents. What's that say? Well, that says that if there is a one basis point decline, downward shift in the yield curve, right, 
the price of these options changes by three and a half cents. However, let's be specific about the units because this is a really common stumbling block. It's three and a half cents per 100 face amount. So that really implicit here in this equality, whoops, uh, zero, zero, implicit in this equality that solves for this is the DV01 per 100 face amount. And then you can see when we solve for here the B, these 100s just cancel. That's why they don't need to be here. Wouldn't be wrong to have a wouldn't be wrong to have a divided by 100 here, divided by 100 here, but they would just cancel. But I emphasize that so we're mindful of the units of the DV01. And I'll go back to that in just a minute when we check our solution. But all this, if we've solved this for this, then we have this equality. And what is this saying? Well, this is saying if there is a one basis point shift in the yield curve, or for that matter, any shift, this amount here on our exposure is going to be exactly offset by our hedge in dollar terms, right? Because this relationship right here, this is the dollar amount of change in our underlying position if there is a one basis point decline in the yield, right? Our actual dollar amount is going to be the DV01 per uh, per 100 face amount multiplied by the actual face amount that we have. So we're just enforcing that hedge so that there is an offset. And then just before I go to the next page here, right, solving for the DV01. The DV01, if you haven't looked at my previous video, my previous video explains what this single factor measure as an approximation does. It's only a single factor measure. It implicitly assumes a parallel shift in the yield curve, that's its strength. It's convenient that way, but that's also its weakness. And so just building on that video here, uh, that previous video without going into the rationale, I'll just key in the recalculation, but we'll just note that we're computing here an effective DV01 because we're going straight to the observation. The yellow, I've got these in yellow input to indicate that these are inputs, we're just observing them in the market. What we observe for the futures contract here, right, is different prices as the uh, par, as the yield, or in this case, the par rate changes a little bit. So based on just these observations, we can compute what is called the effective ZV01 as an approximation of the exact DV01. And right, it's just, just gonna be in the numerator, um, the change in price, divided by the, in the denominator, I'll get that out of the way, the change in yield. And that's because I've really here just computed a slope, right? Change in price in the numerator divided by change in yield in the denominator. That gives me a slope, which then I just need to rescale by dividing by 10,000. And I get then, you can see here for the futures contract, uh, almost seven and a half cents for the DV01 that we've really just extracted from these observations, making it an effective DV01. Okay, so having those values then, if I go to Tuckman's solution, and you can see in blue here, we have the question that we're answering. What is the futures hedge? If the market maker sells 100 million in face value of the options. So that's why I've got this in yellow to show that it's an input. If we're short the 100 million, then we are just applying that formula that we just looked at, right? Which is, okay, we want to know the futures. We just take the face amount of our exposure. That's the 100 million in options. And we multiply that by the ratio of the DV01s, giving me, we're in millions, of 47 million that we would purchase in face amount of the futures contract to hedge and really, in this case, fully neutralize the DV01 exposure of the short option position. And now let's just test the hedge. 
let's just imagine that there is a one basis point parallel decline in the yield curve. Well, we expect our option position to lose by, we have 100 million in short, uh, 100 million face amount by the dollar value, the DV01 of those options, but it's per 100 face amount. And so we're getting uh, three and a half cents, but this 100 is in millions. So I'm going to multiply by 1 million here to get the actual amount. Then we would expect for that one basis point decline, we would expect a loss of 35,000, about 35,000 on the option position. I haven't uh, agonized here over the pluses and minus. I in general prefer, I in general prefer to rely on my intuition for the plus or minus dollar signs because I've just found that if I try to memorize the formulas, I sometimes get it wrong, but the directional intuition is pretty safe. So in this case, it's a loss of 35,000. And if I, I can just copy this over and we see that our futures position on the other hand, right, it's got a face amount 47 million multiplied by its DV01 per 100 implies three and a half cents, uh, but uh, 0 0.035 in millions and an actual value here you can see of 35,050, exactly the same amount. Of course, it's exactly the same amount. We, by definition, we solved here for the hedge amount, but I just want to illustrate that's the point. The point is that now the market maker puts on this hedge by purchasing the futures in this face amount. And then if there's a parallel shift, a decline in this case, in the yield curve by one basis point, the loss here on the options is exactly offset by the gain on the futures. And so as a linear approximation, this is not going to, this is going to work for any parallel shift in the yield curve, one basis points, 10 basis points, 20 basis points, either a decline or an increase. And so that was the whole point. And then finally, I just wanted to show you how Tuckman wraps this up just to demonstrate, demonstrate or reconcile that the solution works, right? Here we have the exposure and the hedge. And then he just uh, and then he just shows, well, what does the result in net position look like given we have this information about the rates? And so right here you can see immediately after the trade, at, when the uh, par rate is 2.77%, the net position you can see here is right is the it's a summation of the option position here which is the 100 million multiplied in this case by the price that's also a price per 100 and face plus you can see here the hedge amount uh, multiplied by its uh, price or um I've got, we have a, there is a negative here to indicate that's a short. So there's a negative here and there's uh, nothing here. But the, um, so immediately after the trade in the actual net position at an interest rate of 2.77 is 54.64 million. And then Tuckman's point is just, well, now let's just test it. If the rates do fall to this 2.72, right, then trusting these prices, we just reprice this net position at these prices. And you can see not a perfect hedge, right, because it's a linear approximation. I don't presume that this is an exactly linear relationship among these three data points, but it held up pretty well. The 54, the, um, the futures as a hedge offset the loss on the options pretty well, such that the net position is 54 million, uh, 634. And then what he didn't show, which I'm showing you here, is on the other hand, if we go up to 2.82%, two, uh, 2 right, and just reprice the same net position, exposure plus hedge, using these prices, that's so that's interesting. Right, rates go up, and we end up in the same position as when they go down, showing that that's uh, not perfect to the initial situation, but symmetrically pretty good hedge. It holds it holds up in either direction. So that's just an illustration 
to confirm or reconcile that this hedge does work as an approximation based on the DV01. And so I hope that's a helpful video. If it is, please subscribe to the channel and we'll make sure you get notified of the next video. Thank you.